Has X-Class technology been massively buffed in No Man's Sky's recent Leviathan Expedition update? I believe so. I started with this little note in 3.90, fixed an issue that could cause a small number of X-Class procedural upgrades to have unexpectedly low stats. This didn't quite make sense to me. In my research of in-game stats, I learned how all of the weighting curves work, and while all of that will come with the upcoming stat guide, I'll show a few today. If the in-game results were going lower than the curves and they fixed that, this note makes sense, but this is not the case. Real quick for those wondering what I mean by curves, if you want to get a random stat from a range, you would use a weighting curve to decide this. The curve you use decides the distribution of the values over that range. So an ease in curve will be weighted to give more results to the low end, ease out gives more on the high end. You use a random number generator of sorts to pick a number between 0 and 1. For this example, let's say it's 0.6. If we apply that to an ease in quad curve, we calculate 0.6 multiplied by 0.6, which is 0.36. That is then used to get the value within the range, so 36% between min and max. I got the calculations for all of these curves from a Unity chart for animation curves, but I expect they are very standard. Back to the note. Two other options could be, first is that they have changed the curves, which would mean either all seeds have been re-rolled or that all have been tweaked, which could result in some stats changing and others not. It's also possible that the curves have stayed the same and a modifier has been added to the end result that only affects low end results, boosting them. Thanks to the quick work of Monkey Man on the MBIN compiler, I was able to check the set curves for each, and the base weighting curves for all procedural technology roles that I checked have not changed. So I did a few in-game tests. I did 100 X-Class Hyperdrive modules and 100 X-Class Hazard Protection modules, and recorded the values from these. I then also generated 1 million random numbers in Excel as a float value between 0 and 1 having 4 decimals. I don't know how many decimals the values in the game have, but as far as I can tell with the way I'm comparing these, only the extreme ends may be inaccurate from this, so we will largely discount the top result. I simulated opening 100,000 of each of the hyperdrive modules and the hazard protection modules using the curves in the game files, and using a fresh batch of 100,000 random numbers for each role in the process. The first chart shows a distribution of 100,000 roles, though it is only on the roles that generated a light year value. As you can see, it is a smooth curve. This is the max is uncommon curve, which is an ease in quad curve, so x times x. This curve has a little over 19% of all rolls be in the bottom 4% of the stat range. On the top end, there are none for 300, but as this is a single value at the extreme, we should discount this for accuracy. But the highest 5% of stat values are only found on around 2% of all rolls. You may think this isn't too bad, but there is a much harsher curve that decides whether this module has one or two stats to begin with. If only one, I've assumed that this is a 50-50 between light year range and warp cell efficiency, but it's tough to know. In reality, it's around 1% of your roll will have a light year range between 290 and 300, and then a small percentage on whether it will also have warp cell efficiency. The super interesting part is when we compare this chart to my in-game manual testing results. This is only 100 tests, 62% of which had the light year stat, 61 had the warp cell efficiency stat, and so 23% of results had both stats, which is superior to my simulation of 100k rolls, where 16% of rolls had both stats. If you follow the curve of this manual tested data, it has some ups and downs, but it does follow the curve generally. These ups and downs are caused by the small sample size. However, the spike at the end is beyond it being just a small sample size. This is boosted on the high end, and it seems it happens after the curve is applied. My best guess is that a modifier is added which sort of gives low end rolls a second chance of being high end. A really interesting note is that those high end spikes, the top 16% of the entire chart, have both stats. This makes me think that whatever this modifier does may re-roll the stats but only uses a single random number for all rolls. This would account for it being so good, as if the roll has both stats, it was a good roll, and so if that same good roll was applied to the curve for hyperdrive range, it would allow for perfect or near perfect rolls to be quite a bit more common without too big of a change. Let's move off from hyperdrive technology though and have a brief gander at the hazard protection findings, as these are notorious modules. 
For this one, I got some confirmation from a long-time veteran player, Spirit, who has performed insane quantities of testing himself for his own entertainment. And when I asked him about his hazard protection roles, he said he never got a single perfect hazard protection module that has 10, 10, 10, 10 for all four stats, not in enough rolls using the stat rolling method I show here to spend 250,000 nanites. This is around 4,150 rolls of that tech without a single perfect module. The simulations I did do sort of support this, though as that is the extreme role, it's very hard to take its accuracy seriously. If we do look at this smooth looking curve, you might wonder what kind it is, but it's actually a culmination of four easing quad curves, like what is used for the light year range. Hazard protection modules are guaranteed to have all four stats, and to simplify this I just recorded all four stats regardless of which one, and then added them together. I did this for both the manual test and the simulation. This simulation is a very smooth curve which makes all four as 10 exceptionally unlikely. I'm talking not a single one had 37, 38, 39 or 40 total points out of the max 40, but as the extremes of this are the tens, we should discount 37 to 40 for the simulation, even if it is backed up by Spirit's findings. When we get to the first of the more accurate readings, which is 36, we get 0.002% chance. 35 is 0.01% chance. 34 is 0.011% chance. It isn't until 25 out of a maximum of 40 that we see something have a 1% or higher chance of actually happening. Now, watch as I layer on the findings from my manual test. And yes, the extremes count in this one. Not only is there a 4% chance of getting the maximum perfect roll now, but also 5% chance of 10, 10, 10, 9. 4% chance of 10, 10, 9, 9 or something similar. This is absolutely huge. It also mirrors what we saw with the hyperdrive range, where part of the distribution follows a curve as ever, but then a modifier is added to turn those worst to the best. After sharing this with Spirit, he wasted no time and this time only had to spend 120 technology rolls to get six perfect rolls. With these tests done, I'm quite confident in saying X-Class are finally the ultimate technology modules. They will still require a whole lot of rolling, but they are finally usable. It is actually realistic to pursue better than S-Class roles in X-Class tech, and soon I'm going to see exactly what it takes to max it all. This was an incredibly data heavy video. These require a whole lot of work, so if you like them, please hit the like button and let me know below, as I'm never sure just how many people actually care about numbers to this degree. Thank you all for listening and have an amazing day. Mm -hmm.